Hello everyone and welcome back to Lewis Fiction and welcome back to another retro fan fiction, the series where we take old fan fictions from my other channel Lewis Films and we upload them on this channel for new viewers and potentially even old viewers to enjoy once again. This is The Amazing Spider-Man 5 and next week will be The Amazing Spider-Man 6. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into this. Enjoy the video. The movie starts off slow after the end of the last one. Felicia revealed to Peter that she had feelings for Peter and Peter now has broken things off fully with MJ after realizing the same thing could have happened to her, happened to Gwen, and now he's all alone again. He just lost Harry, he's now lost MJ, and things are awkward between him and Felicia. Peter is at college and gets a new teacher known as Raymond Warren after Otto Octavius turned evil. We will have slow shots zooming in and out, the sound is muffled and drowned out by the score as he goes in his day-to-day -day life. Spider-Man saved the day once again, but at what cost of the life of Peter Parker? The main theme of the fourth film carrying into the fifth is honesty, and that will be paid off at the end here. But another theme is introduced here at the start, or at least it's been hinted at to be carried over into the Sinister Six movie, which will be a twist of the responsibility theme, the core element of Spider-Man. Now, it won't be the responsibility theme exactly as this has already been fleshed out, and it would be a counterproductive to regress Peter to tell the same story again. However, his arc will be to learn a side of responsibility. The honesty theme that allows Peter to do whatever it takes to protect the ones he loves will be tied into the responsibility theme by meddling with that and what it really means to be responsible as Peter will take his eye off the ball. He will concentrate on protecting the ones he loves rather than protecting everyone at large, which is what Spider-Man should do. This is because after Gwen's death and after the idea of loving someone else in MJ, he's become so obsessed about protecting the ones he loved and that's almost pushing everyone away as well. This becomes his sole focus to where it's all he thinks about. And this sets up his next two movie arc here, and this idea will be implemented more as we go along with the story, and will become more apparent. In the middle of one of Peter's classes, he will get a tip off of a crime going down. There will be a funny scene where Peter has to explain his way out of class to go and fight the thugs. Spider-Man will swing through the city and will come across the thugs. He will take them down quite easily, and will realize that Black Cat isn't there. Even though she knows responsibility, she was hurt. Peter Parker hurt her feelings. Peter was the one who really cared about her, and because he wasn't honest with her and MJ, the two major people in his life, he has now lost both of them because of this. But the thing is, Peter doesn't realize the ramifications of it. There will be a scene where Peter calls Felicia, but Felicia won't pick up, and it will go straight to voicemail. Peter will say how he hasn't heard from her since that night, and he's worried about her and the fact that she hasn't shown up to help take down any crimes either. Felicia on the other end just listens and doesn't say anything back. We then cut to a scene with the gentleman as he's in the shadows, but sees some Oscorp tech. He says that if you want payback given, you can't rely on other people to do it for you, you must do it yourself. He will take down Spider-Man once and for all. And it's some goblin tech, the same that Harry wore before in the series, yet it looks more developed, it looks more dangerous. This movie, when we kick off straight into the action, there is no beating around the bush, we get straight into it. And then the news gets out that Donald Menken has been missing. Peter thinks that this is weird and actively tries to hunt this out. As we remember, Donald Menken and Spider-Man have been subtly at each other's throats for a while. After their confrontation in The Amazing Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man has been onto him and now he's been found dead. But why? Peter thinks that there could be some kind of higher power. Peter will become an active protagonist in this movie, seeking out the answers that have been lingering there for a while. Peter goes to Oscorp and finds him dead, but this time as Spider-Man, which mirrors him going to Oscorp earlier in the series in Venom, where he went as just Peter Parker. Then he was not trying to be Spider-Man and now he's learned that he can never give up, and this change represents this. This shows how far Peter's character has come, and subtle things like this will be hinted throughout this movie just to show the progression of character. Some Oscorp executives will tell tell Spider-Man that some weird stuff has been going on lately, that everything has been secretive and right under the noses of a lot of people regarding the Donald Menken death. Spider-Man agrees and he knows that he's got to find out how he died. He gets a lead to Menken's family and decides to visit his wife. Spider-Man swings to Menken's house to find his wife dead, poisoned by a green substance. Spider-Man's eyes widen, he is shocked. It's been made to look like she poisoned herself. The cops arrive later that day and Jean DeWolf says that she did it to herself and they have a motivation. Her husband was killed so she did the same to herself. Spider-Man says that he's not so sure in that this is all very suspicious. Then from afar in the shadows, the gentleman slips down a mask. We can't see what mask, but he puts it on. 
Spider-Man digs into Menken's wife a little more and finds out that not only was she married to a man who had a lot of Oscorp secrets under his belt, but also she held a fair few Oscorp secrets and actually used to work there alongside Menken. Spider-Man wished he had a straight answer, but he didn't. He's so confused. Then Spider-Man is swinging throughout the city peacefully, thinking about what he's going to say to MJ next time he sees her. He really likes her and he's really starting to think about her again. But what he did was the right thing though, wasn't it? He had to be dishonest with her to protect her, right? As I said, Spider-Man is becoming more obsessed with the fact that he has to protect the ones he loves. Then out of nowhere, someone on a glider similar to Harry attacks him, and he's in a metal upgraded green armored goblin suit, and he laughs. <laughs> Spider-Man asks, who are you? And will crack a few jokes about Halloween. And the Goblin will say he's here to kill Spider-Man. And though Spider-Man has been a thorn in his side for a while, Peter in the fight starts to put the dots together in his head. The Goblin has something to do with Oscorp. Or this Goblin could be the man behind everything at Oscorp. Which could mean the Goblin is behind the Menken killings. Which could also mean the Goblin is behind Menken, which was behind the Rhino and the Shocker. Spider-Man will ask these questions mid-fight as the Goblin will throw pumpkin bonds at him. But it'll be stronger, bigger ones. More powerful than he's seen before. The goblin flies we'll off, leaving again. Peter. Peter is confused, Spider but the next man. step is to figure out who the goblin is. That way, he can be one step closer to the truth. Peter realizes who the goblin was before. It was Harry. Harry would also want revenge after their little feud a few movies ago. What if he wants revenge? What if he's the one behind everything? It would make sense. Peter goes to Harry in jail and he's there. He has a little chat with him. Peter and Harry have an awkward interaction where Harry says that he is no way the new goblin. Harry says that he is over their little feud they had a while ago and that he's got the power to get out of there. So if he wanted to, he would have already. This will just be a little flex about how much power and money Harry has at Oscorp and how many connections he has. Realistically, he can't actually get out of there, but he's just trying to be threatening. We'll then get a few filler scenes where we are with MJ and Felicia, and we'll be catching up with those stories, and it'll be about how they both reflect on the last movie and such, and how they're feeling going into this movie. Peter is still so confused. Who could the goblin be? He doesn't know, and he leaves, and the goblin attacks him again, almost as if the goblin is stalking Peter. He tells him to keep He's guessing, good. but shouldn't they Spider really be talking about who he really is? Spider-Man questions what do you mean and the Goblin reveals all. He tells Spider-Man he knows he's Peter Parker and Spider-Man is shocked by this. The Goblin reveals he knows everyone he loves. Spider-Man while fighting falls away from the glider as the Goblin flies off. The Goblin is toying with him and Spider-Man has to stop this before anyone gets hurt like MJ or Felicia or even Aunt May. Spider-Man has an idea, and it has to be someone who knows his identity, so he goes and visits Dr. Connors. Maybe the goblin is Connors. Maybe Connors wanted revenge all this time. Maybe it was him. Anything is possible at this point. Spider-Man visits Connors, and Connors is still there, like Harry, except for Connors is friendly with Peter. Then the doc tells him that he might know who is behind the Menken killing, and says it might be Norman Osborn. Spider-Man questions that, but... Norman Osborn is dead, right? The doc tells him that some shady stuff was going on at Oscorp before Norman's supposed death, and that they were in full force to make a cure and cast aside a bunch of other talented individuals like Peter's dad Richard to work on this cure, but Norman became obsessed and unhealthy. The cure wasn't just meant to cure the Osborns, but was meant to be mass-produced and sold globally for many diseases according to the doc, and then all of a sudden one day, they stopped working on it. And Norman accepted his death. Connors and everyone working there found this very suspicious. Connors had a theory that this guy behind everything is the real Norman Osborn. Spider-Man asks, how is that possible? And Connors said, well, after everything that has happened with him, Electro, Goblins, and Rhinos, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Spider-Man will dwell on this thought. However, before anything, he has to sort out things with MJ and Felicia. Peter goes to Aunt May to ask for advice. She says that he has to be honest with those two girls because if he isn't, he's going to hurt their feelings. Peter is thinking that their lives matter more though, right? But Aunt May has a point. You have to be honest with them. He's taking his eye off the bigger picture, off the ball. He also has to be there for them when they need him the most because what if one day the reason he's not there is the deciding factor between whether they live or die? But Peter decides he can't dwell over what happened with Gwen too much and decides to finally be honest. He goes to MJ's house and amping himself up. He's ready to tell her he's sorry. He's ready to make up. And then the goblin flies out of the window with MJ in his hands. Peter screams no and chases after the goblin. The goblin has kidnapped MJ because he knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. It's come right back and it's looped all the way back around to bite Peter right back on the ass just because he wasn't honest with her. 
It's like Peter Parker cannot win in this situation. Everyone that he loves, as long as he's Spider-Man, is always going to be in danger. The Goblin is testing Spider-Man's limits when it comes to a standstill. All the cameras are on them both, and the Daily Bugle reports local news girl Mary Jane Watson has been kidnapped. Felicia sees us on the news, and we have a moment with her. She knows that she has to help, and maybe if she did something sooner, they could have gotten to the bottom of the Goblin sooner. Then maybe MJ won't be in so much danger. So she decides to stop being selfish and petty, and the black cat is back. One goblin killed Gwen, the other threatens to kill MJ, but Peter has learned. Peter has improved since then. This scene, almost repeating itself like earlier in the movie, will be a test of character. How much has Peter learned? How much has he improved? How much has he changed from earlier in the series? Spider-Man says he just wants to know what he has against him and the Goblin says everything. They start to fight and MJ is trying to crawl away but the Goblin gets Spider-Man down and grabs MJ again. Then he drops her. Spider-Man tries to go after her but Goblin latches onto him and holds him. And just before it's too late, the Black Cat comes in out of nowhere and kicks the Goblin, releasing Spider-Man. Spider-Man swings down and remembers what happened to Gwen. Instead of catching her with a web, he webs the closest thing to himself and yanks him down to the floor. He grabs MJ. MJ with both hands and swings her to safety. MJ says thank you Spider-Man and Spider-Man swings off as Cat fights the Goblin. The Goblin has the Cat down and she's struggling and Spider-Man comes in and kicks Goblin, returning the favour. They have a funny exchange where they say they're even now and they have a little makeup chat where they catch up quickly before facing the Goblin. And then in the fight they rip the Goblin's mask off. It's the gentleman, also known as the real Norman Osborn. The Norman that died before was a criminal known as the Chameleon who was hired by Osborn to fake his death, so all suspicions of Osborn being behind the attacks were all but eradicated. He became obsessed with his work, he found a cure to the Osborn disease a while ago called the Green, which in high doses could also be used as a poison. But only he had access to the tested and proved version, the version that Harry took in The Amazing Spider-Man 3 was just a prototype. Osborne took it in small doses through gas and that enhanced his immune system to fight the disease, but then he became addicted. After Spider-Man appeared, he knew exactly who he was. He studied him right after the Battle of New York with the Lizard and even spoke with Connors himself. He knew that he was Oscorp's creation, but more importantly, Osborne believed it couldn't be a coincidence that Richard's boy became Spider-Man. Even though it was a coincidence, Norman Osborn doesn't see it like this. Norman and Richard had a feud themselves. The reason the Spider Project was discontinued until Connors came along was because Norman and Richard had a falling out about who could use the research for what. Richard knew Norman was dangerous and could see him becoming obsessed with his own work, so did the right thing. Richard took the research and tried to destroy it when Osborn hired the hit on them that killed them in the plane crash. So then to hide suspicions of Norman being the one being behind the killings, and so it didn't lead straight back to him and Oscorp, he hired Chameleon to fake his death and hide out in the shadows ever since, controlling Oscorp and Mencken from the inside. Norman is the reason for Peter's parents' death, the untold story. Norman is the reason behind Donald Mencken. Norman is behind everything, and he's the gentleman. He says that if something needs to be done, you've got to do it yourself. That is what he's learned. So becomes the Green Goblin, using the Goblin, Goblin serum and formula to enhance his agility, strength, intelligence to take down Spider-Man, the offspring of Richard Parker. And now the whole war between the Parkers and the Osborns, this entire franchise will end here with Norman killing the last Parker, Peter Parker. However, Spider-Man won't let that happen. Peter and Felicia team up and take down Osborn once and for all. They win. The Parkers win. Spider-Man won. Now this is where the peak of the personal feuds and needs to only save the ones he loves happens going into the next movie, The Sinister Six. Peter will start to come back around to almost reevaluate what responsibility means, but the first arc of the last movie and this one needs to be rounded off first. Now the whole personal feud and connection ties into the whole personal war between Peter and Osborn, as you can see it all peaks here for these characters. But here is the thing. Peter Parker was Spider-Man on accident. It just so happens that it was all a part of the bigger picture, all a part of the big war that led into this final battle between Norman Osborn and Peter Parker. And then he has to be honest, so Peter will go to MJ and reveal that he is Spider-Man on purpose and say that he is sorry for everything that has happened and they never wanted to end it like this. MJ says that she loves him and they make up for a happy ending or so they thought. We cut to Norman in prison who is pissed. 
but he has one more trick up his sleeve. If none of the villains could defeat Spider-Man alone, what if they all tried together? Thank you for watching the amazing Spider-Man 5 Retro Fan Fiction. If you did enjoy, make sure to like on it and also make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all types of fan fictions, new and old. We've got Spectacular Spider-Man Season 5 coming very soon as well as my Spider-Man animated series finale. If you are enjoying this series, however, then make sure to not miss the amazing Spider-Man 6 and the conclusion next week on Monday. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.